Xi'an just released four new lights in a brand new Molus B series, and I can only assume that B is for either Bowens or maybe Bicon. Anyway, Xi'an was kind enough to send one of these out so we could do some tests and get a closer look at this new light. This here, by the way, is the Xi'an B200. Now, Xi'an isn't paying me to make this video, but I do get to keep this light. So the B series is kind of an interesting step by Xi'un. They're expanding their ecosystem with lights that can compete more directly with other brands like Aperture, Godox, and Nanlite, making the Molus ecosystem a more viable and a more rounded option for lighting. So in this video, I figured we'll take a look at the B200 from Xi'un and see how it stacks up against some of the other COB lights in terms of color reproduction, color accuracy, fan noise, and all that fun stuff. Compared to the Molus X and the G series, the B series have a more conventional design with a regular Bowens mount instead of the smaller proprietary mount we see on most of the other lights in the Molus lineup. All the B series lights, including including the B500 are bicolor with a temperature range from 27 all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. Now, I don't have any way of checking the CRI ratings, but Xi'an have a pretty good track record, so I can only assume these numbers are fairly accurate. Now, the lights in the new B series comes with a Bowens mount reflector, just like this one here, with a Xi'an logo on the side. They also come with a four and a half meter or 14.7 foot power cable. The interesting thing here is that all the lights in the new B series have a built-in power supply, even if they're smaller than your typical COB light with a matching output. Now, just for reference, here's the B200 next to the Godox VL150, which relies on a separate ballast and power supply, just to give you an idea of the size of this here B200. Now, let's take a quick exterior tour. So obviously the front is gonna be dominated by the ship and the Bowens mount, while on the top, behind the grids here, we can see the giant heat sink. It's basically just a ship and a super ginormous heat sink. The sides, both of them have fans, and there's also an extra third fan here in the back. That's pretty much it. The fan noise, I did some tests, which we'll take a look at in a second here. But what I can say is the fans can be picked up depending on the output you're running this light on and the distance between the light and your microphone, obviously. Dimming is done with the dials here. We have one dim knob on this side. And on the other side, we have our CCT dial for adjusting color temperature and all that fun stuff. You can control the lights with Xi'an's Vega app, which offers even more control when it comes to uh, adjusting output. There's also gel simulations for CTOs and CTBs and that kind of stuff. Another option for controlling these lights is the wired K1 controller which is, it's sold separately, but it's, it's actually a neat little uh, thing to have for some of you that don't like to use apps. And that controller plugs in here in the little USB-C port. So that's another great option if you have these lights mounted high up in the stand where it's difficult to reach the knobs and make adjustments and that kind of stuff. The housing on this light is pretty much entirely made out of plastic, except the part for the Bowens mount here, which is aluminum. These are plastic. The inner part of the joke is actually made out of metal, while the pin receiver is made out of plastic. But I think it feels sturdy enough, and I don't think there's gonna be any problems. If so, if you were to kind of crack the uh, pin receiver or something, I'm sure Xi'an would have uh, some, uh, some spare parts to send out. I'm actually gonna remove the screw, yeah. There is kind of a brass reinforcement here on the thread, so that's good. And speaking of screws, there's also a little umbrella mount here on this side, which I don't think I mentioned earlier, but that and the rear display here that's gonna show you your color temperature, your output are gonna be the last stops on our exterior tour. I have used the B200 out on a recent shoot and I was happy with its overall performance. 
the color quality or accuracy and all that fun stuff. But to give you a better idea of the color reproduction and everything, I, I decided to set up a quick little test here in the studio comparing the B200 with some of the COB lights that I normally use for shoots here in the studio or out of location. So these are samples straight out of the camera shot in S-Log3 and I just added the Phantom Neutral Conversion LUT without any further tweaks. Don't get too hung up on the different levels or exposures. I just dial everything in real quick by eye so there might be some slight differences in exposure. I think they all looked pretty good. Let me know if you have a preference. Maybe you're watching on a different display than I am. The only thing that I can say is that I really, really like having a bicolor key light. It's such a great thing to have for warming up skin tones, like in, in this example. No, not this one, this one, where I set the color temperature to about 4,500 Kelvin and it just warms up the skin tones and it makes me stand out a bit more from the blue background. Okay, so we did talk about fan noise earlier and here's some examples to give you a better idea of the amount of fan noise you can expect from these lights. Okay, so now we have the B200 set up as my key light here in the studio and it's going at 100%. And I just wanted to give you a quick example of the uh, the amount of fan noise you can expect if you're running this light at 100%. So the microphone is right up here. So about about one meter, three foot away from the uh, from the light, and it's still I can hear the fans on the uh, the B200 ramping up still. But I'm gonna keep quiet here for just a second so we can listen to the uh, to the amount of fan noise coming into the microphone. Yeah, the fans are actually running on the light and we're at 30%, but I can't hear anything from, from this position here. So I'll be quiet and we'll see if we can, if the microphone is gonna be able to pick them up, so. We're at 50% and it's running quiet. So with the new B-Series, Xi'an becomes a much, much more rounded ecosystem. We finally have a somewhat <laughs> regular looking light with a standard bow in its mount, which makes the use of regular modifiers so much easier. And we also get a fairly decent range from 100 all the way up to 500 watts right out of the gate. Now, the things that I don't like with these lights or this light here, the B200, the cable length is fine, but a little extra length wouldn't hurt. Cables, they're always too long when you're packing things down and sometimes too short when you're ringing things up. But I could see four and a half meters or 14.7 feet being just enough for studio settings like this or even for smaller on location shoots. The output seems fairly consistent throughout the entire color range. And even if we could hear the fans vaguely in our tests, you know, for them to be just a tiny bit quieter would obviously be better, but I think these are still within the tolerable range. Now, if you're in need of a lot of power, then maybe stepping up to the next level in the series would be a better idea to give you more headroom when it comes to fan noise. So, if you're aiming for the 200, then maybe get the 300 just to be able to run it on 50% power and all that. And there is no included bag with these lights. So if you're planning on bringing these out on sets, I'd recommend getting something like a, like a padded stage bag that can hold several lights instead of having one giant bag for each light. It's just gonna make your life so much, much easier. So anyway, I've put some links in the description where you can compare the pricing and all these, the one, the two, the three, and the 500. I've put a link to Xi'an's official store where you can deep dive into more of the technical details and the specs and all that fun stuff. 
I want to thank you for watching and I also want to thank Jiyun obviously for sending this out so you and I could have a look at it. But that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.